And good afternoon, race fans. Welcome here as we get ready for race number 11 of the third season of the SRA Hershey's Cup Series. This is our final race of the first half of the regular season. This is our final race until we get to All-Star Race Weekend. And then it begins, 13 races heading towards the 10 race chase for the championship. So, you know, this is an opportunity for drivers to go into the second half of the regular season not worry-free, but at least having one of their goals checked off the list of goals that they had set for themselves at the beginning of the season, and that's a trip to victory lane, potentially putting themselves in position to be in the chase for the championship later on this year. We're at one of the toughest racetracks on the circuit, though. This is the Monster Mile Dover International Raceway, and this racetrack is very, very difficult. And I'll give you two reasons why it is, and basically a lot of this based off what we saw in our uh, Almond Joy race here yesterday, and that is pretty much the fact that passing here is very difficult. A lot of drivers that are at the rear, middle of the field, they want to force the issue, get to the front as soon as possible, so they'll try three wide. And the way that the turns are built with the banking, the gradient banking isn't really built for three wide, especially off the corners of two and four. So with trying to force that issue, a lot of drivers get tight, they slide up the racetrack, the banking can't keep them down at the bottom, and they'll end up causing wrecks like that. Another thing that we also have that's a difficult thing for drivers at the front of the field is this track can sometimes cater to drivers on the inside line, but a lot of times it will cater to drivers on the outside line. This is a two-groove racetrack, and so it all depends on how your car is set up as to which line you choose and which line is going to propel you forward, which line is going to drop you further back. So it's basically the tail of two lanes, and we're going to have to see What's going to be the case here today? Will we end up having a wreck fest? Will we have a long green flag run? Because if that's the case, then fuel strategy could also come into play into the outcome of today's event. Brandon Gonzalez lines up on the pole position in the Mitsubishi Lancer. We haven't seen Brandon Gonzalez in victory lane since Texas of last year. And that was the first half of last year's regular season races. Keith Batson lines up alongside of him. We've still yet to see Keith Batson go to victory lane this season as well as in his career. Then you've got the points leader coming to this race and our Infineon race winner, Kat Tellier, lining up in the third position. Fourth place, Levi McIntyre. We haven't seen him in victory lane since Las Vegas of last year. Zach Flickinger hasn't been to victory lane since last year at Yas Marina Circuit. Cole Baker, our winner from Talladega earlier on this year, lines up on the outside of row three. Then you got in seventh place, our winner from Eldora, Emmanuel Hartnett. Then it's Benjamin Miles, Dylan Poteet, Leon Alvarez. That's the completion of your top ten. All three of those drivers have been to victory lane at one time or another here in Hershey's Cup Series, but not yet this season. Points coming into this race, they're close between two drivers who are actually start right up here inside the top ten. Cat Tellier, the points leader, four points over 10th place starting Leon Alvarez. But then it's about 26 points back to third in the standings, and that's Cole Baker who's rolling off from sixth place. So the top three in points start up here in the top ten, but uh, really the closest battle is between Cat Tellier and Leon Alvarez. We'll cover that during the course of today's race. As we're about to get ready to go racing, we don't have the command to fire up the engines like we normally used to because uh, this season, uh, for the remainder, at, at least until I'm able to get a uh, an upgrade to Windows 7 and all that, uh, we're gonna be running with the replay mode, so. Sorry about that. I actually also was planning on putting the uh, NSRA banner up, back up because I do know where I can get it, but I, uh, forgot to, so we'll have that during All-Star Race Weekend. I also found out that the frame rates drop when there's a lot of cars in the picture, so if these cars get spread out, the it'll get better, and oh, we got a trouble already, that's the 73 of Joshua Circuli, and he's gotten himself down there to the inside line, but something amiss on his machine as he's already smoking and off the pace. Up too. All the way back to about maybe 13th place James Richardson. There's a gap now. And Brandon Gonzalez, he has checked out now on the field. Got himself a good start. Pat Tellier moves into second. Teammate Keith Batson there in third. And the first lap of the race led by Brandon Gonzalez in 23. Tellier there in second. The battle is actually on for the third position, and it may be over. Levi McIntyre will take the spot. Keith Batson now will find a spot in line in fourth, and they're racing really hard behind him. With Cole Baker.
Baker, Zach Fligacher, here comes Emmanuel Hartnett up on the outside line, and he'll take the fifth position from Batson. So it looks like that outside line is coming into play early. I'm sorry, that was actually the fourth position that Hartnett took from Batson. Tellier, McIntyre, and Hartnett all got around Batson via the high line, dropping him back to the fifth. Batson now has a rear deck lid full of Cole Baker, Zach Flickinger there, and now we got a battle further up here. That's Levi McIntyre to the inside of Cat Tellier, trying to take the second position, and he might have her cleared off of two, and he does. So there you see it, the case of the inside line working. Uh-oh, I heard some scraping. Somebody hit the wall back there? Are we under caution? Yes, we are. We are under caution. I heard someone hit the wall back there. I don't know who it was, but we're under our first caution of the day, and it comes out here on lap number four onto the completion of lap four onto lap five. Let's see who this might have involved. And James McLeod is slow. Also, Ryan George on pit road. There's a couple other drivers up ahead here. They're on pit road. Johnson Adino, Jake Baskinger. Former winner this season in Baskinger. Two-time winner Matt Haas is involved. A lot of right side damage on his Bass Pro Shops Toyota. There you see Joshua Sakuli just ahead. He's on pit road due to some mechanical issues. There's McLeod. Jessica Shelton's got some left side damage on her car. Morris Dudemeyer Jr., Chris Dalton, a couple of drivers that had to qualify their way in. I don't know if they got involved or not, but... Citadino's coming back off pit road, as is Ryan George. We've got some drivers here in this lead group that elected to pit, including Levi McIntyre and Emmanuel Hartnett. They were running at the time in second and fourth, and they are now coming to pit road. So looks like pit strategy, regardless of it not being a long green flag run, looks like pit strategy is coming into play. So Brandon Gonzalez is gonna be the leader here under our first caution. Let's take a look and see what happened. Well, we said before how this track really can't hold them three wide. Well, they attempted four wide here. Chris Dodd, Michael Norman forcing the issue with Jake Baskinger. And Baskinger trying to move up in front of Galligan, but wasn't clear. So he has to move back down. And Michael Norman was not willing to let up. And there was a little contact right there between Kyle Matthews and Michael Norman that might have sent Norman up into Baskinger's left rear as well. Baskinger hard, hard hit into the wall. Car actually flips up onto its side, up into rookie Matt Haas, who had nowhere to go. Dallas McIntosh getting a piece of it right there. Jessica Shelton trying to get through, but gets Matt Haas from the right, Baskinger from the left. Anthony McCurry might have gotten a piece of that as well. Not exactly sure. And then you see right there, Ryan George going to come down the racetrack trying to avoid, and he gets into the right side of the 83 of Citadino, and then I believe also got into the left rear of James McLeod, turning the Dragon Ball Z Chevrolet around as well. As Baskinger's car still on its roof comes back down onto the apron of the racetrack, and I'm not really sure that car flipped back over. I don't think it did. Boy. Wild ride there after that heavy impact into the inside wall for Jake Baskinger and a number of other drivers collected and swept up in his wake. Well, as we get ready to go back green, only one driver currently out of the race. That's Joshua Sakuli retiring with an engine issue. Two cars line up a lap down, Matt Haas and Jake Baskinger. How Baskinger is still running after his car was flipped over, I don't know, but they're both scored off the lead lap. So we have 39 of our original 42 cars running on the lead lap. Two cars a lap down. Randy Gonzalez will get the restart as the leader. Cat Tellier in second. Flickinger is in third. Batson in fourth. And Cole Baker in fifth. Then it's Miles, Alvarez, Keys, then Hudson, and Pokti. That is your top 10 as we get ready to go back green here at Dover. Green flag will come back out here on lap number nine. Still a long ways to go in this one, and you gotta wonder about those drivers that are looking to come to pit road, like Emmanuel Harden at Levi McIntyre, giving up valuable track position. Is this going to pan out into their favor or not? I don't know if 
Kat Tellier didn't get a good start or what, but she just lost a lot of positions right there. And Brandon Gonzalez has checked out once again. They're three wide around the outside of the two lap machines. He'll move into second place. And that looks like Kat Tellier may be able to use that outside line that she jumped up to before to maybe get third. Oh, Mo Baker's got it as he moves by Matt Haas and now He'll try working his way by Jake Baskin. And I think we might be underwater again. We are. Well, this race very similarly looking like our Almond Joy Series race with cautions breeding cautions. We've only run 10 laps and already we're under our second caution of the day. And at this one, might have involved the 15 of Tim Walsh. Possibly John Sedino and Jessica Shelton involved in this as well. So we're under caution again. Let's see now if any of these leaders are gonna decide to maybe short pit here under this second opportunity of pacing. And it looks like Brandon Gonzalez may be coming to pit road. Yes, he is. As a matter of fact, it looks like Everybody's coming to pit road this time. So this could put Emmanuel Hartnett, Levi McIntyre, one of those two up into the race lead with all the rest of the leaders coming to pit road here under the second caution. But let's take a look and see what happened. Oh, it looks like Dylan Young is staying out. So Dylan Young rolling the dice, staying out. He'll lead a couple of laps, I guess. So let's take a look and see what happened. Puts under the second caution. Now this was coming off of turn number four. Sedadino, Walsh, Michaels, Carson, Scott kind of in that three wide situation as well and boy on that one it looks like Tim Walsh got a little loose off the exit of the corner comes down to Sedadino and Sedadino apparently not appreciating that comes back up and hooks the 15 car around that hurt Sedadino just as much as it hurt Tim Walsh Walsh nosing it into the wall but Sedadino kind of pancaking the left side and Wow, my goodness, Matt McIntyre. Close call there, and oh, Shelton did get involved. Got into the back of Citadino, and oh, goes up and pancakes the right side of her race car into the safer barrier there in turn one. Man, so three-car incident pretty much right there, but it's a wonder nobody else hit the 15 when he was sliding up the racetrack right in front of traffic. That was a, a close call. Well, that puts us under the caution for the second time here today at Dover. Looks like we better start settling in for some uh, a number of restarts here. As it seems like the cautions are definitely beginning to breed cautions here at the Monster Mile. Well, we've received the signal of one lap to green. Green flag will come back out on lap 15, giving us a quarter of the way through this race. Well, the pit strategy definitely did work out in favor of some drivers. Dylan Young has not yet pitted it, to my knowledge, and he'll restart as the leader. You got Ryan George there in second, who was involved in our first caution. Third is going to be Levi McIntyre. Matt McIntyre lines up in fourth, and Keith Batts in fifth. First of the drivers to pit under the last caution, Brandon Gonzalez, who was came out. He'll restart in sixth, with Lickinger, Chris Dodley, and Al Reese and Blaine Keys behind him. Now, Jake Baskinger is still a lap down he's on the inside line Matt Haas is on the tail end of the lead lap of both of those machines will start a very interesting restart to say the least and up to this point we still only have one driver out of the race and that is Joshua Sakuli. so 41 of our 42 cars still running even after two caution flags here at Dover and the green flags back out but back for the restart once again time trying to go to the inside but there's that slower car of Jake Baskin that's going to hold up his progress as Dylan Young tries to go to work of putting Matt Haas down the lap again and he will succeed so Dylan Young clears the lap traffic out in front battle on for second Ryan George has it but for how long here come the McIntyres Levi and Matt good run so far even though it's Pit strategy for both Ryan George and Matt McIntyre. A couple of go or go home non charter drivers that race their way into this event. Run up there inside the top five. Right now, it looks like Levi McIntyre is kind of caught between a rock and a hard place. 
Ryan George does have damage, so he might not be completely up to speed. And that Haas is a lap down. He got damage from the first in, the first caution as well. So Levi McIntyre trying to have to figure out how aggressively he's got to race these guys to get by them in order to get up there and challenge his teammate Dylan Young. Dylan Young and Levi McIntyre were the only two drivers, Young Motorsports last season, to go to victory lane. Levi McIntyre did it at the third race of last season, Las Vegas. Dylan Young did it during the chase for the championship last year at Homestead, Miami. There's a car up ahead that just came to pit road. And that was Emmanuel Hartnett, who actually was one of the drivers that came to pit road under the first car. So I don't know if this is strategy on the part of the 97 or not, some short pitting, because he came down pit road the same lap that Levi McIntyre did. But you can see Levi McIntyre is still out on the racetrack or in the third position. So this might be strategy on the part of Emmanuel Hartnett's team. They're maybe thinking this thing could go into a long green flag run and pit stops might be able to cycle around in their favor. Keep in mind, Emmanuel Hartnett has a win already this season at Eldora. So, you know, teams like that that already have a victory, they have a, a simple luxury of being able to kind of roll the dice, try some strategy in later races. Got to make sure it doesn't come back to bite them in the butt, though, and put them outside the top 30 in the points, because if they do, do fall outside the top 30 in the point standings, heading into the chase for the championship, then it doesn't matter whether they're going to be playing that season or not. Top 30 in the points, if you're not there, you're not going to have that win count towards a spot in the chase for the championship. I'll tell you what, I've been kind of interested in the fact that these drivers all stayed out, and they have all managed to keep Brandon Gonzalez, who was on pit road under that last caution, at bay. Brandon Gonzalez has been able to get no higher than sixth place, and has actually got Keith Batson battling him for that position. So Brandon Gonzalez, despite getting... Uh, Pressure tires has not really been able to make up much ground on drivers that have about maybe five, six lap older tires than he does. Maybe if, as the run goes on, that will change, but not seeing any sign of it right now as we got a battle for second up ahead here. Levi McIntyre, well, that wasn't much of a battle. It ended quickly. McIntyre moves into the second spot now. It's now Young Motorsports 1 2, and Zach Flickinger now trying to take the third position for Ryan George. Heading down here into one, inside line may be able to give him an advantage, and it does, so move Flickinger to third. Ryan George now falls back into the fourth position. And we may have a battle for the lead. Levi McIntyre now finds the leader, Ryan George, now all over the back bumper of his teammate, Dylan Young. And Flickinger steps out of line now, trying to go for second place off of Levi McIntyre, but McIntyre getting a nice run on the high side. He might be able to take the lead here off the back straightaway, and he does. I think Dylan Young, I don't know if something happened right there with the two car, but he seemed a little bit slow off of turn two. McIntyre now moves to the top position, though. Dylan Young hangs on to second place. Flickinger now tucks back in line in third. This is valuable bonus points for both drivers out of Young Motorsports. Dylan Young out in front of it, now Levi McIntyre leading the lap, so that's an extra bonus point coming the way of both of those drivers, both trying to make the chase. I also noticed another driver that's actually starting to fight his way up here into the top 10. He's actually now up into the fifth position, and that is Cody Lamas. He just worked his way around Brandon Gonzalez for the fifth position. Cody Lamas. Mind, both he and Benjamin Miles had pretty solid cars a couple of weeks ago at Gravity City Industrial Zone, and right now both of them actually run up inside the top ten. Miles not too far back in eighth. So I believe, based on the drivers that stayed out versus the drivers that pitted under that last caution, I believe Cody Lamas is the highest running of the drivers that pit under that last yellow flag, Randy Gonzalez was before he got passed by Cody Lamas. And on, Joseph Srigley. Nice run there for the 24, trying to get to the inside of Keith Batten. This is the battle for seventh. Benjamin Miles and Cole Baker in ninth and tenth, running right behind them. Solid outing as well for our winner two weeks ago. There he is, Blaine Keys in the US Army Chevrolet. Trying to get around Matt McIntyre. You got Nathan Hudson right here in this mix as well, that six car. Hudson picked up his only Hershey's Cup Series win last season at Lime Rock. But he 
drove for Michael Norman Motorsports, now driving for Anime Racing Team, battling his teammate there, Matt McIntyre, and right behind them, you've got JT Bryant. So right now with Bryant running where he is, the 14th position, all three of the Young Motorsports cars are up inside the top 15 as things stand right now. Right there might be your new points leader as things stand at the moment. Leon Alvarez is currently running in the 15th position. He came in four points behind Cat Teller, and you can see Teller is back there about maybe nine cars behind Leon Alvarez. So Alvarez right now just trying to, I guess, keep the gap between himself and Cat Teller, and he could end up being the points leader when we leave here at Dover. And there you just saw Dylan Young on pit road. So Dylan Young, who I believe did not come to pit road under either caution flag, he is now on the pit lane, which means may not be too long before we see Levi McIntyre, Zach Flickinger, maybe on pit road as well. Ryan George also could be added into that list as McIntyre with about 1.7 seconds. Now cut down to 1.6 over flicking through Dylan Young, who's now leaving pit road. Now, what he's got to hope is for no caution flag to come out, otherwise he'll get trapped off the lead lap. He needs these pit stops to cycle through to maybe get him back up into the top five in the running order. And McIntyre, Flickinger, I don't know when they're going to pit, but Cody Lamas, he is coming quickly. He's now battling for the second position with Flickinger. All over the back bumper of Flickinger's Toyota Camry. And I don't know if he's going to try passing the 93 before or after the 93 is going to have to make his pit stop. If you look at it from a time standpoint, Cody Lamas is roughly somewhere about 4.2 seconds ahead of fifth place Joseph Srigley, who was on pit road under the last caution. And that would be the gap as things stand right now between drivers that can make it a couple laps more than these other drivers that are up here inside the top five, like McIntyre, Flickinger, and Ryan George. So when Levi McIntyre and Zach Flickinger, when they come to pit road, Cody Lamas is going to have himself a pretty good gap back to second place and here comes McIntyre he will give up the race lead he's coming to pit road I don't think Ryan George hit pit road yeah oh yes he has so is Matt McIntyre so now we're waiting for the 93 of Zach Flickinger who's going to try to stay in that next lap gets himself a valuable bonus point for leading that lap but he's still got a rear deck with completely full of Cody Lamas and Lamas he's going to go to the inside and try and take the race lead here if Flickinger had any plans of coming to pit road that lap or not, but whether he did or not doesn't matter because uh, Cody Lamas kind of changed his plans for him, stuck him to the outside line. There was no way that Flickinger would have been able to safely get to the pit lane. He would be able to get to pit road now if he so chooses, and I believe now he is going to come to pit road. No, he's not. It looked like he was peeling down towards the inside line like he was going to come to pit road and like he was giving room to Cody Lamas to pass on the outside, but apparently not. There's McIntyre finally leaving pit road. Pretty long stop there for the 99 team. I don't think he made any contact with the wall or anything, so they couldn't have had an extended stay on pit road or that's concerned, but nonetheless, still seems like an awfully long time to be on pit road, but and again, this pit road is, I believe, a uh, 40 mile per hour pit lane. And you compare that to the lap time these drivers are carrying on the track that's, let's be honest, pretty small. I guess that would seem like an eternity that you're sitting on pit road. Well, maybe I'm wrong. I thought that Zach Flickinger was a driver that uh, had not been on pit road since the first caution, but maybe he can make it a little bit further. Maybe he is on the same strategy as Cody Lamas. Leon Alvarez, the current points leader as the live points are going on on pit road. 
And as we were watching this battle up here at the front, between Cody Lamas and Zach Flickinger, we've actually got some good battling going on from about the fifth position on back. You have Baker in third, certainly in fourth. And then here's the battle for fifth going on here. Well, Brandon Gonzalez, Benjamin Miles, this is a good battle that's going on here with some drivers that were just on pit road up ahead, including Ryan George, Dylan Young, who actually raced their way through this group. Oh, and here comes Gonzalez, Keys, and Miles to pit road. Baker is in. What about the other drivers? Yes, they're in as well. Top two are in. Flickinger and Lamas, and Lamas having to woe up just a little bit to avoid running into Joseph Strigley, and they're saying that Cat Tellier is now the race leader. So the driver who came into this race leading the point standings is right now the leader of this race, and it looks like she's now gonna be coming to pit road to make her pit stop. So getting a valuable bonus point there, Chris Dollarton also stayed out that lap, as did Joshua Michaels. So the two drivers out of Rage Motorsports, the 12 and the 10, staying out an extra lap. I think they may have been hoping that they could maybe get an extra bonus point for leading the lap, but that's not going to be the case. So now this calls into question with all these drivers pitting somewhere between laps 39 to 42, will they be able to make it the extra 21 to 18 laps on this tank of fuel? I think they can. I think they're within their fuel window. And I'm getting word, guess we're under caution. Pace car has left pit road. We are under yellow during the cycle of these pit stops. I don't know exactly what happened, but they threw the caution right in the middle, almost the completion of these pit stops. I don't know. There's some, some Left side damage there to John Cittadino. I don't know if maybe he was the reason for this caution coming out. But they are scoring the 97 of Emmanuel Hartnett as the race leader. There he is. Hartnett is currently scored the race leader. Keep in mind, he came to pit road a lot sooner than everybody else. Oh, it looks like now he's going to come to pit road again. I was going to say, it looked like that worked out really well for them. Well, at least it's going to get them a bonus point for leading a lap, but now all that track position he gained, he gives up as he's coming to pit road. And they're scoring Cat Tellier, the race leader. Now they've switched it over. It is now Cody Lamas, who is the race leader. Lamas is the leader. We've got McIntyre scored in second. Dylan Young has scored third. Then Ryan George and Zach Flickinger. That is your top five, the way they have it scored right now. We're going to have to get official word when we get ready to restart because I think that the running order is really jumbled up based off of cycle of green flag pit stops, but they have Cody Lamas currently scored as the race leader. We're going to step aside see what this caution even came out for. Went into a nice long green flag run. I thought we might be able to go green to the end, but apparently not. Third caution of the day here at Dover. And this is going to involve Michael Norman. I think this was just uh, kind of signals crossing between Norman and Fitzwater. Fitzwater had just completed his pit stop. Norman, I believe, was about to come to pit road. And I think he was slowing down to let the 76 by. The 76 just slides up in the corner right into the driver's side door of Michael Norman. Puts him up into the wall and... Oh, that's why they threw the caution, because the three car spins around facing the wrong way and comes drifting down the racetrack. So, yeah, smart move by NSRA officials to throw the yellow flag for that. If, if he had stayed up in the wall, then probably there might not have been any reason for the caution, but spinning the thing around right in front of oncoming traffic, definitely a reason to throw the caution. So, tough break right there for Michael Norman, who... Was just trying to get to pit road, and oh, and then the car gets stuck there on the apron as well. So yeah, definitely a reason to throw the caution. But man, we were getting ready to see if this race was going to be kind of a fuel strategy race, and now caution flag's going to really shake things up. 
So it appears we have all of the issues taken care of as far as what the running order looks like, even though it really doesn't look like it out there on the track. Cody Lamas is indeed officially the race leader. Levi McIntyre, Dylan Young, Ryan George, and Zach Flickinger. That's the top five with Baker Gonzalez, Pat Tellier, Blaine Keats, and Chris Dollerton now your top ten. We have a number of drivers ahead of the leaders that are on the tail end of the lap, including Sanford, Kyle Matthews, Chris Dodd, Zachary Fitzwater, Natalia Salinas, James Richardson. They're all on the tail end of the lead lap. Dylan Cote, Matt McIntyre, Anthony McCurry, Tim Walsh, and Leon Alvarez. That's 28 on back through 38. Then you got two cars on the inside line a lap down. That's Jake Baskinger and Matt Haas. We actually do have another driver behind the wall, but behind the wall a couple of laps ago, and that was Keith Batson. So some mechanical issues for him as the green flag is back out with 14 laps to go. All these drivers ahead of the leaders, not all of them are off the pace. A lot of them are drivers who just had the missed benefit of being kind of lap down when that caution came out. Here comes McIntyre to the inside of Cody Lamas for the race lead. It's all a matter of who's going to get through the traffic best as to who may come away with this race lead. And Lamas using the outside line. I believe that inside line is getting held up by the slower machine of Jake Baskinger and Cody Lamas Behind Charles Sanford uses the outside line and he is out in front now, showing the way in this race. Dylan Young trying to move into second, I believe he has just done so. And Cody Lamas, I don't know how much racing he wants to do with these drivers up ahead of him. They are all up to speed. And they're gonna wanna stay on the tail end of the lead lap, I would think. They're, they're gonna be in battles of their own for track position here. I mean, Sanford, Fitzwater, Salinas, Richardson, they're all actually battling for position on track. And, of course, in the point standings, every position means something. Contact just ahead there between Salinas and Richardson as they're three wide, trying to get around the lap machine of Matt Haas. Racing somewhat crazy just in front of race leader Cody Lamas. Lamas not forcing the issue, letting them do what they got to do, apparently. And now he's going to try and get around Charles Sanford and put him a lap down. Following in the tire tracks of Zachary Fitzwater, Zach Flickinger has now moved up into second and he has cleared the traffic, at least some of it. Here's the 93. He's gotten around Baskinger, as has Co Cold, uh, Cold Baker. I was going to say Cold Dally and I had to stop myself. TBT to Cold Dally and then Benjamin Miles now is into the fourth position. It's actually a good battle going on there between the 18 and the 42. And Baker will hang on to the spot, at least for now. Miles right in his tire tracks there in fourth place. And Levi McIntyre, I believe, is now in a battle for the fifth position with rookie Ryan George. George has fifth, McIntyre there in sixth. Now you've got Sanford, Matt Haas, they are separating. Second place, Zach Flickinger from the race leader, Cody Lamas. Next time around, Cody Lamas will be hitting the stripe and there will be seven laps to go. Cody doesn't seem too worried about passing Zachary Fitzwater right now. Can't really say I blame him because at the moment he's got two lap machines between himself and second place. And that battle for second place is actually heating up quite a bit back there between uh, Flickinger, Cole Baker, and Benjamin Miles. Cody Lamas in his career only has one Hershey's Cup Series victory. He came in his rookie season, season one, at the regular season finale of Eminem Super Speedway. Last season, he played the bridesmaids so many times it was hard to keep count. Finishing runner-up multiple times. He was the highest running driver in the point standings for a majority of the season due to his consistency, but he just couldn't find victory lane. When he hits the stripe, he will be five laps away from possibly picking up what will only be his second win of his Hershey's Cup Series career. His teammate, Benjamin Miles, has now moved into second place. Miles 
still battling with lap traffic. He's now in the second position, and right now, NW Racing is running 1-2. Miles, a two-time chaser. Made the chase in season one, made the chase in season two. They are three wide ahead of him. Chris Dodd, Charles Sam for Matt Haas. You have Flickinger there in third, Cole Baker in fourth, battled for fifth, Blaine Keyes is all of a sudden up here in the mix. Matter of fact, he just moved by Cole Baker and took the fourth position away. Baker back to fifth. Does Miles have any time to reel in his teammate Cody Thomas? I don't think he does because he's got two other drivers he has to bypass, Samper and Chris Dodd, before he can even get to Cody Lamas. And Lamas now about to put Zachary Fitzwater down a lap, and he will complete the pass of the 76. Well, I thought he was going to. Here comes Fitzwater battling back, though, on the high side. And Fitzwater will clear him, and here comes Chris Dodd, also on the outside line, trying to get back to the lead lap. And looks like he will succeed. And now there's only one lap machine between Cody Lamas and teammate Benjamin Miles. That last time by at the stripe, just about a second separation between those two. There's also only a lap and a half left to go though. Cody Lamas on the inside of Fitzwater trying to get as much distance and as many lap cars between himself and Benjamin Miles as is possible. White flag displayed this time. Cody Lamas lets Fitzwater go. Miles still has to get around Sanford. NW Racing is one and two right now. Cody Lamas, Benjamin Miles. Miles not anywhere close enough to mount a charge. Still a car between the two of them. And Cody Lamas for the first time since season one. He will finally find victory lane. Takes the checkered flag here today in the Autism Speaks 400 at Dover. Last season, second place after second place after second place, just couldn't find victory lane. And now finally, Cody Lamas finds victory lane in season three, moving from Toyota to the Chevy team of NW Racing, aligning himself with two-time chaser Benjamin Miles, and now finally finds victory lane and could potentially be racing in his first Hershey's Cup Series chase for the championship. And what a statement by NW Racing. One, two, finish for that team. We're gonna step aside for just a minute and then we'll show you your full finishing results as well as your point standings after today's race. So Cody Lamas, he closes out the deal Finally, here in season three, he tried so many times in season two, just came up just a little bit short. But he gets the job done here. Teammate Benjamin Miles gets second. How about Zach Flickinger? That car was strong all day. As a matter of fact, if we're perfectly honest, he was the only driver that really gave a lot of competition to Cody Lamas just before that cycle of green flag pit stops. But he'll finish third. Blaine Keys, this guy has been on quite a momentum streak after winning a couple of weeks ago. He's going to be fourth, and Cole Baker will finish in fifth. Tremendous run for him. Levi McIntyre, he was up there early on, but uh, kind of drifted back after getting kind of shuffled back in the field with that late caution. He'll finish in sixth, though. Joseph Strigley gets seventh. How about go or go home or rookie Ryan George? Gets rookie of the race finishing eighth today. Brandon Gonzalez, the pole sitter, will finish ninth. And the points leader coming into this race, Kat Tellier. Nice finish for her in the 10th position. The rest of your top 15, Sean Galligan, really didn't talk much about our Daytona 500 winner. He'll finish 11th. John Arndt comes away with 12th. How about the Honda of Joshua Michaels gets 13th. Trent Dunham didn't talk about him at all today. He gets 14th. And John Cittadino, James McLeod, a couple of other go or go home non-charter cars that finish in the top 20 in 15th and 16th place. Chris Dollerton finishing there in 18th. And how about the debut of Amore Studemeyer Jr.? He could have finished the day out in the 20th position. Not a bad run for that driver out of Joe Gibbs Racing. Look on down through the remainder of the finishing results. And you see there Emmanuel Hartnett tried some strategy. He'll end up 23rd as a result of it. And then you look on down here, and here's where a lot of uh, drivers really had some struggles. Matt Haas ended up getting caught up in that early incident. Finished lap down in 36th. Kyle Matthews finished way back in 37th. Dylan Young, we saw him up there at the front of the field early on in this thing, but uh, 
due to pit strategy, he did not make it to the checkered flag on that tank of fuel, had to pit with about two to go, and as a result, finishes 39th a lap down, so not the way he wanted to end his day. Jake Baskinger flipped over, but still managed to finish the race in 40th, and then two drivers out of the race, both retiring due to mechanical issues, gearbox issue for Keith Batson, and at the drop of the green flag, Josh Pasquale came to pit road with smoke billowing underneath his number 73 Ford. Apparently, it was diagnosed as a piston problem. So, a tough break for both of those drivers. But Cody Lamas picks up the victory here. We've got to see how this puts him in the point stains. That's coming up right after this. So, here's what the point stains look like after this race. Kat Tellier grows her points lead even more. It was four points between herself and Lee and Alvarez. But Alvarez not coming away with that great a run here today. And Tellier finishing in the top ten. Now has a 19-point advantage over now second in the points, Cole Baker. Leon Alvarez drops to third, 25 points back. Zach Flickinger moves up to fourth, and Trent Dunham drops to fifth. And it's Blaine Keith, Matt Haas, Joshua Michaels, Dallas McIntosh, and Emmanuel Hartnett. That's your top ten in the point standings right now. Your race winner, Cody Lamas, jumps up ten spots to 23rd in the point standings. Teammate Benjamin Miles jumps up eight spots to 22nd. And how about Sean Galligan? documented how he was way down around the 30th position and the points really needed a good run to get himself away from that bubble spot well he moved up today four spots in the standings to 24th in points so right now as things stand matt haas cat tellier cole baker blaine keys dallas mcintosh emmanuel hartnett jake baskinger kyle matthews cody lamas and sean galligan they are at this point locked into the chase for the championship. You look on down here, and of course, last week's winner, John Bunnell, way down and 43rd in the point standings and did not make this race, so that obviously really hurts his chances of getting up into the top 30 in the point standings. So right at the moment, as far as the race winners we've had so far this season in the 13 races, 11 of them are currently situated very nicely to make it into one of the available 16 spots in this season's chase for the championship. So, next up, we've got the All-Star Race Weekend, where we're going to be having non-points events going on at Charlotte. That's going to be really interesting. Hope you'll tune in for that, as basically all that's on the line is pride and purse, a lot of bragging rights, and a million-dollar check. And then after that, it'll be an off week for the Almond Joy Series, as we get ready for the Hershey's Cup Series' longest race of the season, the Coca-Cola 6 Hundred. That should be a great one. Hope you'll tune into that. Thanks, everybody, for tuning into this race. Congratulations to Cody Lamas on the win here today at Dover. If you enjoyed this race, be sure to give us a like, subscribe to Compare the Crew today. We showed you your finishing results. Here's your point standings. And we'll see you guys next time as you've been watching production of the NSA Offline Racing at its best.